Hello my crafty friends and welcome back to another card making video. Today I'm going to show you three different ways on how we can use dyes that give that stained glass look. Maybe you already have in your stash some dyes that look like that. For my examples today and to show you the three different techniques, I will be using some dyes by Spellbinders from the latest release. So this is the Radiant Oval die set by Spellbinders and it comes with lots and lots of dyes that you can mix and match if you like. And I will share two cards using this set today, using two different techniques to get that stained glass look and I do have another set from the same collection to show you one more technique at the end. So for the first technique to get this stained glass look, all you do is to color all the different parts with your favorite medium. In my case, I'm going to use my alcohol markers. So first of all, let's do the die cutting. I'm using that intricate die that has that lovely flower design along with the outline. So I will end up having a cutout that looks like a lace, so beautiful. And of course you can use it as it is on its own. Against a dark background, it would look just stunning. So I cut it uh, twice from white cardstock, once from uh, golden cardstock and now I'm cutting out the outline. This is going to work as a base and since this is a very intricate design I'm going to need a glue that has a very fine tip. So this is a great uh, opportunity for me to try my new Barely Art glue. This is a white glue and I wanted to try it out for a while now. So here we go. I'm going to report on this glue in a future video as I play with it more and more and uh, for now I'm really happy with it. It didn't clog on me for now but this is uh, just a couple of uh, days that I'm playing with it. It is very very thin. The tip is just like a needle. So perfect for intricate work. It doesn't smell and the best thing about it is that when it dries, it dries completely clear and it doesn't give that shiny look. So if you are a little bit messy and you have glue oozing out from the pieces, it's not going to show that much. Also one thing I have to mention is that it is quite liquid which means that you don't have to squeeze the bottle too much and have your hands hurting. Anyway, I'm going to place that first layer on top of the outline and now I'm going to grab my alcohol markers. I'm going to color in the whole design, the flowers and the leaves and I don't mind if I go outside the lines. Of course make sure that any glue is completely dried. You don't want to touch any glue that oozed out from the pieces with your marker because it's going to ruin the tip. I am even doing a little bit of blending. I'm using two shades of uh, pink for the flowers and I will use two shades of green for the leaves. Notice that I go over the lines. I don't mind at all because I do have another piece that I can use to put it on top and this is going to cover up any mess. So you can see it's going to work like that. So one technique is to use your uh, coloring mediums and color all the different pieces to get that stained glass look. If you want you can even go with a glaze on top of it to make it shiny or even add some uh, Versamark ink and apply clear embossing powder. This is going to give some shine as well. When we see a die like this one, we instantly go for the inlay technique, but sometimes the die is so intricate like this example that it would take hours of fighting with tiny little pieces trying to find where they are supposed to go. So this is a great way for very intricate stained glass designs. And although it looks so messy at the moment, once you place on top the lace design, it's going to cover up all the mess and it's going to look so beautiful. And here is where I realized that I forgot to color the stem, so I'm going to quickly add some color there before the glue dries. So my first plan was to use this lovely border as it is on top of that oval and I can stamp the sentiment there. But then I changed my mind and went for a more dramatic uh, design. So I'm going to use this golden design as well as this uh, dark green cardstock as my base. I'm going to stick the golden design on top of what I already have. I also cut out the oval from that dark green cardstock and I'm going to foil my sentiment that says thanks for all you do. Of course since I have that uh, golden detail on the border I'm going with a um, golden foil as well. I'm using my glimmer machine to make sure that the blade is nice and warm and once everything is ready I'm going to run the whole platform through my die cutting machine a couple of times 
And you can see the lovely result. I absolutely love how foiling stands out against a dark cardstock. And so let's finally put the card together. I'm going for a standard card that's four and a quarter by five and a half. And this is vanilla card base. It is off white. I'm going to add some foam tape at the back of the oval as well as at the back of the border. I love the elegance of it. It is a very uh, versatile design, so you can use any sentiment along with that. I'm also going to embellish it with a few gems here and there. And here are some finished photos. So again, if your stained glass design is very intricate, just go for it and color all the parts with your uh, alcohol markers without having to fight with tiny little pieces of paper. However, if the design is quite big that you can play with paper, you can use any colored cardstock or even glitter cardstock. For this example card, I'm using the two dies that were included in the previous set. And uh, this time I'm going for a completely different design. I'm going to combine the oval as well as those rays inside and cut them out from white cardstock. So now I end up having the outline out of white. And I'm going to cut out that shape two more times, once from lighter yellow and once from a darker one, so that I can alternate the rays inside my shape. Again, I did use only the outline oval shape to cut out a base. I'm going to stick the intricate design on top and then on the inside I'm going to stick every little piece. Now this of course isn't time consuming because this design is very simple and the pieces are quite big. And this is only when I recommend doing the inlay technique since it's not going to be frustrating and it's not going to take forever. So here is my easy and quick way of doing that. I did add glue only on every other one of the rays and now I'm pushing them down so they are going to fall exactly where they are supposed to. Just a tiny little piece that didn't fall on its own and then I can remove all the rest of the pieces that didn't have glue and now I'm going to add the lighter yellow. I'm going for a summer card and for the sentiment I went with summer vibes. This comes from the tweet sentiments from my collection and I did white emboss that. I'm going to stick on top the oval and you can call this card done. It is clean and simple, really bright and I think it is perfect for summer. However, I'm going to show you just a couple of touches that you can add if you want to take it a step further. So I did cut out the seagulls, three seagulls, and this comes from the die from my summer birdhouses die set. I am going to stick those all around the card. I think it embellishes the card nicely without losing that clean and simple look. And of course I kept them white. I love how they contrast against that background. And I have to say that my birdhouses dies are designed in such a way to give you lots and lots of tiny embellishments that you can work with throughout the year to embellish other cards. Even if you don't use the main birdhouse as your focal point, you will find lots and lots of little details there. I did use my Nouveau shimmer pen to add some shine on the rays. And hopefully you can see that here. And you can see two completely different looks but still using the same die set just by mixing and matching the different dies included in the set. And before we move on to the third and last card for today, here are some close-up photos of my summer card. For the next card I'm going to use the Tulip Trio die set from the stained glass collection by Spellbinders and it comes with many dies again that you can mix and match to create completely different designs. So I will be using some of them to show you the third technique when you are going with stained glass designs. You can create windows and you can have openings where you can see the inside of your card or even you can make a shaker card. And that's exactly what I'm going for today. So I'm going to use the circle with the three tulips as well as the outline and I will also use the square die to create a panel. Since I'm going to have a square panel I decided to go for a square card as well. So this is five and a quarter by five and a quarter. This is a ready-made uh, card base that I have from Spellbinders and there are matching uh, envelopes, square matching envelopes for that but you can make your own if you want to. So for my panel I decided to go with this cardstock that I had in my stash and it is kind of shiny, it has a satin finish. I'm going to combine the square along with the intricate design but I'm not going to use the circle. 
Otherwise, it's going to cut out the medallion and I just want to have a window inside my panel. And you can see here exactly what I mean. So here I end up having a lovely window that you can turn into a shaker card if you want to, or even you can die cut this one directly on top of your card front and you will be able to see on the inside of the card. Don't throw away the inside pieces. You can use them, of course, for creating another card using the inlay technique. And that's exactly what I'm doing here. I'm just trying to find which are the pieces that I shouldn't throw away so that I can put them aside for another card. But anyway, back to the card that I'm actually sharing for today. I'm using double-sided tape at the back of my panel. I will go all around the window. I will peel off the backing and then stick on top a piece of acetate. I'm just eyeballing the size of the acetate that I need and then I'm going to stick it down. You will see that this way I create kind of a glass look at the front that looks beautiful as it is. It looks like stained glass. Now at this stage one thing you can do is to go at the back with your alcohol markers and color in some of the areas. This is going to actually give the look of a stained glass effect. However, I decided to do some paper piecing, so I'm going to add the inside pieces for uh, all the tulips, and I did use light pink cardstock for that. I also cut out the same design one more time from green, so that I can use the stems and the leaves. And I'm not going to do paper piecing on the whole design, otherwise I will not end up having a window. I want to have some open areas, so I'm only paper piecing the main design, the flowers. This way I will have some window areas where you can see all the shaker elements that I'm going to add next. Now I am using foam tape and I will go all around that window. And then finally on top of my square card I'm going to add my confetti. I'm going with this confetti by Studio Katia which is very flat. This is going to ensure great movement inside the shaker window. They are not going to stack together, no matter the thickness of the foam tape that you use. I'm going to place my panel on top, make sure that I have a good contact. And if you notice, my window is not at the center. It is towards the top, so that I have enough area at the bottom to add sentiment. And of course, since I cannot stay away from my own collection, I did have to add something, a little touch from there. So this little three-dimensional bow is a die that comes in my birdhouse's uh, winter collection. And uh, of course it is super versatile, you can use it throughout the year in so many different ways. Just a touch of cuteness. Now I'm also going to add some gems on each and every one of the tulips. And I did also went with You Are So Amazing as a sentiment. Really versatile card again, you can use any sentiment that you want. And here are some close-up photos on the third and last card for today. So these were just three ideas on how you can create cards with different techniques when you are working with dies that give that stained glass look. There are many many more ways on how you can use them, but I hope that this video was fun and that you got inspired. You will find a link of all the supplies that I used down below in the description area as well as on my blog. Don't forget to like the video, to leave me a comment down below, and thank you all so much for watching!